Hi, this is Pastor David Rosales of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California. Today, we as a nation are being called to pray something that the United States has been practicing as a nation since the Second Continental Congress encouraged people to pray and to fast in 1775. Interestingly, the Continental Congress in 1775 issued a proclamation recommending a day of public humiliation, fasting, and prayer be observed by the English colonies on Thursday, July 20th, 1775. The proclamation instructed the colonists to pray for a resumption of the just rights and privileges of the colonies in civil and religious matters. Over the years, the observance of a national day of prayer was on occasion sporadic, but in 1952, during the Korean War, Billy Graham, at the age of 32, issued a challenge when he said, what a thrilling, glorious thing it would be to see the leaders of our country today kneeling before the Almighty God in prayer. What a thrill would sweep this country. What renewed hope and courage would grip the Americans at this hour of peril. On April 17, 1952, President Harry S. Truman signed a bill proclaiming a national day of prayer must be declared by each subsequent president at an appropriate date of his choice. And today, we celebrate the national day of prayer. Why should we, the church, observe such a day? We do so because scripture commands us to pray in such a way. Paul wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Unquestionably, this nation was founded on Christian principles, and we need to remember our national heritage. In history classes throughout this nation, our early history has been ignored or denigrated. People need to remember that the pilgrims who founded the United States came here seeking religious freedom. They must be reminded that the first college, Harvard, founded in 1646, was established to train Christian ministers. As a matter of fact, the first 126 colleges that were founded were established by a religious group or religious denomination. Of the 55 men who signed the U.S. Constitution, all but three were members of biblically orthodox churches. They must be told that the first act of Congress authorized the printing of 20,000 Bibles in order to bring the Christian gospel to Native Americans. Many have never been taught that the Northwest Ordinance drafted in 1787, the same year as the drafting of the Constitution included the words, religion, morality, and knowledge being necessary to good government and the happiness of mankind, schools, and the means of education shall forever be encouraged. This ordinance was approved by the United States Congress. Our nation is in need of prayer and needs to return to its spiritual foundation because there is an ongoing battle for the soul of America. Our moral foundations are being undermined and we need to remember the words of Psalm 11 verse three, where we read, when the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? I find it concerning that this nation is so rapidly yielding to evil. It is something that the prophet Isaiah spoke about when in Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 and 21, he wrote, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. What are we to do? We are to remember that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for pulling down strongholds, casting on arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We walk in the flesh, but we do not war according to the flesh. Because of this, the first thing we must do is to come to the Lord in humble prayer. We need to pray for this nation and for those who are in authority, regardless of political affiliation. We pray that that God will appoint righteous government officials, that this land may be blessed. Proverbs 29 verse two says, when the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. 
In light of this, we pray that the president will seek God, that he might be filled with the spirit and wisdom, and that he might become a model of godliness. We also pray fervently for the church, the body of Christ. We need to seek the Lord. It's time for us as the church to remember who we are in Jesus. It is important for the body of Christ to be unified in him and to stop building petty kingdoms. We need to pray for pastors that we might be true to God's word and avoid compromising the message for fear of losing members of the church. We must pray for spirit-filled ministers and that God will raise up a new generation of pastors to take this world for the Lord Jesus through the teaching and preaching and living according to God's word. Of course, we pray for the nation of Israel of all the proofs that have ever over time accrued declaring the reality of God, Israel is one of his greatest evidences. God commands us to keep Jerusalem in prayer. Psalm 122 verse six through nine reads, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. And finally, we pray for families, that God will restore broken homes and heal broken hearts. The strength of the nation is the family, and there has been a concerted effort to undermine the family and the result has been the destruction of children, the confusion of children concerning what love actually is and the undermining of their basic identity has led to the perversion that is now regarded as normal. Sexual perversion, alcohol abuse, and recreational drug use has become the new normal. Homes are destroyed, producing angry children who are left alone and are actually being raised by their own friends who are also children. And as a result, violence has escalated and natural affection has been undermined. We need to pray for marriages. And you who are Christians and are married are to remember that marriage is called by God his holy institution. It was and is his intent to produce godly offspring. So I exhort you to do your best to produce a God-honoring marriage and to raise children who honor the Lord. This nation needs to turn to God from the corrupt politicians to the average American citizen we need to remember what God said to Solomon when he said in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If my people do these three things, first, humble themselves. In other words, be brought into subjection to God. Second, pray and seek my face. And third, turn from your wicked ways. In other words, if my people repent, then I will hear, forgive and heal their land. Lamentations 3 verses 40 and 41 says, let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. This is Pastor David Rosales, Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California.